First, we had the blackboard. Then we have the whiteboard, something that is still used today. Then after that, we have our interactive whiteboard, something that I use every single day and is found in many schools around the world. When it comes to the interactive whiteboard, there are many different softwares available for you to be able to write on the whiteboard. The one I'm going to be talking about today is called My Viewboard and in my opinion, is one of the best ones out there. Let's get into it. Hi guys, I hope you well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use my viewboard. My viewboard is a phenomenal piece of interactive whiteboard software that is both free and flexible for teachers. Now, I'm gonna split this video into two different parts. This first part is going to be talking about some of the basic features, things that I use regularly on a day-to-day -day basis. Next week, I'm going to be making another video showing you how you can also connect pupils so that they can see the viewboard at the same time as you. That's really good and beneficial for those of you who are still doing distance learning. It's also really good if you're doing blended learning and things like that, and we'll get into that next week. So to start off with, I wanna show you some of the basic functionality of my viewboard, things that I've been doing this week with my class, and hopefully you can join and use the software yourself too. It's absolutely, definitely something that I would recommend. So this is my viewboard, which is powered by ViewSonic. Now to access this, you would need to sign up, which is free. For the purpose of this video, I've already done that. So let's go through and sign in. It makes it a lot more efficient for in the morning so that I can just quickly access it. Now, today we're going to be looking at the whiteboard functionality. In next week's video, we're also going to be looking at the connectivity so that you can let other pupils join, which is fantastic for really embedding children's learning, especially if they're from a distance at the moment. So let's jump straight into the whiteboard functionality so that we can look at that. So this is my viewboard whiteboard and it's an extremely flexible piece of software that is beneficial for learning. Now, I'm gonna show you a range of different features, a bit of a tutorial so that if you want to use it, you can. So to start off with, this button here is just going to be beneficial for those of you who are perhaps different hands and it depends on how you are in your classroom. This button here allows you to bind your Google Classroom. It also allows you to open up things from your Google Drive. One of the benefits of having this is that you can actually put your Google Slides into this. What you would need to do though is turn it into a PDF by downloading it as a PDF because this can only upload PDFs because we are on the internet. Now, in addition, you can then upload things directly. You can save things too, which is also fantastic. Now, this here is a QR code. The benefit of that is whatever you've done through your QR code, if you scan this QR code, then it gets downloaded, which is really beneficial. If somebody else is watching a lesson or a child wants to save something, let's say you're in secondary school, then they can scan that QR code and keep whatever's on your screen at the time. In addition, you can then also upload pictures from the Google Drive or from your computer too. This is the media section, which is an extremely powerful tool. Now, you will notice the YouTube icon, which is there. And the reason this is beneficial is that you can upload a range of different videos from YouTube. Now, I'll show you that now. Let's say we were studying the history of chocolate. And we wanted to search it. Then if you imagine we're doing a bit of a presentation on the history of chocolate, then we can just preview that and show the children straight away, which is beneficial for them. In addition, we can add images, like I said, through our Google Drive. You can see that there. And then we've got images. So let's say as we're doing got chocolate, we can do straight from the internet. We've got a range of different images of chocolate. We can just drag them in. You can imagine if you're doing something about Roald Dahl or anything really, you can just drag those pictures in straight from the internet. So you haven't got to go copying and pasting things, which is extremely flexible for a range of different lessons. In addition, you can also add internet links in. You can add custom links in, so a link of your own. It might be something to uh, an educational game. I've got Scratch here, so if I add the Scratch in and then press the presentation play, when I click on that, then it's going to take me through to Scratch, which again is extremely flexible. And it's going to make learning a little bit more efficient. Now, we've got a range of different things going on here. In addition, we've got a timer. I really like this timer function because I often find myself going onto the timer function and sort of struggling when the children can't then see the original board because I'm on Google. 
So then you've got all of the learning in one. You can set the timer by clicking and adapting this. What you do need to do with the timer is actually press the play button, similar to with the link. Then you need to go onto the timer button and then you can just adapt it as and when you need. So if we start there and then come off, then we can press play and you can see we've got a 10 second timer going on. I'm gonna stop that so it just sets off the alarm and then delete it. Talking about deleting, we've got our pen and we've got our rubber tool. Now with the rubber, our rubber itself won't actually rub the picture out. What we need to try and do is either delete all using the bin or you can circle certain objects and delete them that way, which is really beneficial, especially if you've got a touch screen. So with our pen and our rubber, we've got a range of different pens available. We can change the size, um, we can change the color. If I wanted to write in red, you can see a range of different shades there too. So let's start with red and we can come to our rubber and we can then rub that out as a normal whiteboard. Now you can see something's popped up in the corner and that is because I've actually got the AI pen turned on. If I draw a picture, then the AI pen will recognize that picture and come up with some suggestions, which is fantastic if you're not a competent drawer like myself. So let's say come up with a bit of a face and draw a circle. There we go, it's already recognized it. I can then just drag and drop that in, which is beneficial. And then I can just rub that original picture out because I've already got a face in. So you can imagine again, really flexible, a range of different ways of using that. Now I want to get rid of everything. So I'm gonna press delete all items. We've got a range of different shapes available. I found this really beneficial if I wanna create almost like text boxes. So I regularly use the circle, just the circle and the rectangle functions for a range of different rectangles. I use that one too to draw straight lines as well, which is really useful. You can of course make them different colors. It's great for shape if you're doing 2D shape as well. And then we've also got our text function. This is great. What I would recommend though, is when you're using text, make sure you do the text the night before, do all the writing. I found for efficiency, writing things during the lesson slows down the process a little bit, but just, yeah, just do it the night before. We've got a range of different fonts available here. And we've got a range of different uh, alignments. We've got a bold, we get it. It's, it's a word processor and we can write and then we can, move that around too, which is useful. We can move just the text. So we've got that there. I'm again, just going to delete everything. I love how quick it is. Then we've got this here. We can then add slides and delete slides. So you can imagine if you're doing a bit of a flip chart and you wanna go through a series of slides, you can do that. Then we've got a range of different backgrounds here too. So we can change the background color. Let's say if we wanted to change this to yellow, we can do that. If we wanted to use some of the integrated ones, we can use this one here. This is one that I regularly use. This is the lines for English, which is really beneficial. In addition, there are some other ones. So you can imagine we're gonna apply that to the page and then we could then add that picture in. So we're going to put a landscape, landscape. And then we can ask the children once we've sized this up, oh, how would we describe that? And we could either add adjectives to describe that setting or then use bits of writing as well, which again is very beneficial. In addition, you've got an absolute range of different ones loaded in. So you can use these backgrounds to benefit learning. You've got grids and you've got ones for health organizers similar to what we had before this is great for example if you're trying to do something with coordinates uh, you've got handwriting lots of different handwriting things there's loads i'll let you explore that it'll be more exciting for you to go through and explore that too if you do just quickly want to have grids on i would recommend changing that and then very quickly just changing that but it might not work you might need the actual grids that I've shown you through the view board there too. You can also add a confidential sign, which might be good for uh, those little missions and things like that, if it's going to be a secret letter. You can imagine a range of different circumstances for using that too. This can be moved around to suit your needs. 
Now, there's lots of other functionality for when pupils join in, which is what some of these symbols are for. This one in particular is something that I'm going to show you through the My Classroom when we come to it here. And I'm going to show you that in a video next week so that we can talk about how that functionality is used within the classroom, something that is really beneficial for learning. For now, though, I want you guys to go and explore how you're going to use that with your children. It's definitely something that is useful, as you can probably see, and it's something I would recommend. So let's finish the video. And that marks the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and feel like you'll be able to use my viewboard with your class. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it. Remember, I'm gonna post a link for my viewboard into the description so you can check that out. Remember, next week I will also be providing another video showing you how to connect pupils into the my viewboard so that they can see your screen at the same time. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you're alerted when I post that video too. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. But until then, I'm out.